What's the hardest part about being my mother that I may not be aware of? The hardest part? Wow. Oh, the hardest part is that you don't have your dad in the house. He's not with us. That's the hardest part, that you don't have the benefit of having him there to rescue you from me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the hardest part, that you don't have the, the opportunity to begin like, Dad, can I go do this? And then he would say, did you ask your mom? And like, yeah, she said no, but can you help me? Yeah, that kind of thing. Or being able to model um, that type of loving relationship for the future for you. Yeah. Oh, wow. What are you hesitant to ask me? <laughs> hmm. What was your first time like? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so, okay, yeah, I can see why you're hesitant to ask that. Okay, yeah, so I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> well, wow, so I feel like that is a question that, like we're gone away somewhere special for the weekend, just you and I. <laughs> so you can ask me then, when we go, okay? Yeah. But now I know what it is. Yeah, cool. I'll be prepared for that. Okay. Oh, no, it's your turn. Yeah, yeah. it's your turn. I didn't read it. I didn't read it. What experience did, experiences do you, did you have as a child that you wish I had experienced as oh well? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, living on the farm. So our land that we have, that 20 acres, we were able to get that land from who? Do you remember? Your grand? No. Our second great grandparents bought land during the Civil War in the 1860s. They bought 59 acres of land. You remember that? I, I didn't share that with you. Oh my gosh! So we got to go through all this. I have. No. Not I one haven't. on one. Okay. Maybe I. I shared it with my older brothers and sisters, so it's time for me to share that with you. Sorry. So Adam and Betsy Smalls, they purchased 59 acres of land that was confiscated during um, from enslavers, plantation owners, that were on the side of the Confederacy, or were living in the Confederacy. And the federal government said that the Union federal government said that the people that should have the first opportunity to buy the land would be the people that were enslaved and working on the land for hundreds of years. And then they went to downtown Beaufort to the Freedmen's Bank because there weren't any banks for newly freed people um, in the South, that is. And they went there and they opened up a bank account on February 9, 1869. They put money in the bank, and on that paper, you've seen the paper, and it has, um, it's asking Adam where he was born, and he said, St. Helena Island. Then he says, where were you brought up? And he says, same place. And then on it, it says, where do you live now? And he has Eddings Point. And Eddings Point and Tom Fritt, where we, our land is, are, are um, next to one another. Um, then it says, uh, who do you work for? And he says, himself on his own land in 1869. Yeah, I gotta share that with you. I'm so sorry, baby. So, okay. Oh, I like this. How can I help you even more in becoming the person you want to be? Understand my views. Understand my views. <laughs> yeah, you really emphasize that. In what way? Like Sometimes when I tell you about situations, you don't take my side. I know you're not really supposed to take my side sometimes, but yeah. it would be nice yeah. a little bit. Okay. I remember like you come home and you said, I remember that you were in kindergarten or first grade when this boy was touching your hair or, <laughs> and
and you wanted to fight him and you came home and you said you're going to kick him and I was like wait a minute Layla <laughs> wait a minute no, we can't do that you can hurt him really really badly but you said oh, you're going well. to kick him between the legs but that's not you remember you said you're going to kick him in the balls in no the you oh yeah you said oh you said the nuts and it was just awful and and I was like, no, you can't do that. You can hurt him really, really badly. I said, you only do that if, like, you're being attacked. I felt I was being attacked. But he just wanted to touch your hair. I felt I was okay, being so attacked. Okay, so this is my lesson that you're trying to say. You want me to understand and take your side sometimes. What if you're wrong? So what? Okay, all right. How do you think our Gullah culture shapes the way we connect to one another? Oh, wow. Now, what am I, well, that's a great question, right? I remember this time when you, you came home from school and you started speaking gala and you said, mama, the teacher made me pick um, the thing up off the floor. And I was like, oh, Layla, you're speaking gala. And yeah, we take, so we take the R off and you know, it's just flow. And uh, I was just really, it, it made me feel really good that you were picking up some things from your schoolmates. Although at that time, probably you weren't, maybe you've gotten some of it from me, but mostly from your, your schoolmates. How I got it as well from my schoolmates and my neighbors. Oh wow, okay. How do you think we contribute to the preservation of our Gullah community differently? And why do you think that is? So, yeah, how do we contribute differently to the Gullah community? I say we go out and do stuff more like you have events on events on events on events, just focusing on the Gullah culture. Mm -hmm. You spread it around quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You're quite well known because of it. Like what are you I doing? remember this one time at school and one of the social studies teachers played an ETV movie and you were on it and everyone came to me after they watched it. They're like, Layla, we saw your mom on TV. Oh my gosh. And like, that, that's what she does. It's all got the culture over there. Yeah, yeah. And so why do you think that is that we do it differently? I guess because it needs to be done differently because not many people know about the color culture, so it has to be spread in different types of ways for more people to know about it. Yeah. You think it has anything to do with you being in a younger generation and not as old as your mama? And yeah, in what way? <laughs> so I think, I think, and you, something may come to mind for you, but I always say, I argue that any culture that's been Americanized, with each generation, you lose a little bit of that culture and you have to really fight hard to hold on to it, I think. What makes us family? Oh, um, well, other than you coming from my womb. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Don't say it. Uh, I know there's something coming, but you're not gonna say it, no that I came out of your vagina. <laughs> oh, God. You said vagina with an F. F. So Auntie used to say that instead of vagina, you would, she would say vagina. Okay, okay, that's it uh, because of that. Okay, all right. <laughs> so that and then um, what makes us family? Our love for one another. Yeah, that I would do anything in the world for you. I would like protect you with my life. I would die for you. Hi guys, if you were watching that video and thinking, I'd really like to ask some of those questions to my family members, we have the and family edition available at theskindeep.com slash shop.